So how did the lives of the German people change 1933 to 1939? We're going to look at a few groups within this section. We can start off with looking at workers. So famously, um, by 1939, from uh, almost 6 million unemployed people in 1932, at the time the election that saw Hitler came to power, there was almost hardly any unemployment uh, at all. 35,000 out there, a total of 25 million men. However, we know the, re the reality is very different. For example, that didn't include a focus on, on Jews. It didn't include a focus on, on, on women either. Also, though, one of the major issues for the Nazis is that they were really made a big emphasis on this idea of blood and soil, the, the, the need to have farmers, the need to provide food and, and produce for the German nation. Um, and this focus uh, led to the Reich entailed farm law, forcing farmers to pass their land on to their older sons rather than divide and sell it. And the idea behind this was to keep farmers going to make sure that they, they, kept, they kept farmers going but actually many people left to go to the cities and the rural population had fell from 21% to 18% so actually under the Nazis there were less farmers available. Industrial workers made up 46% of the population, the Nazi obsession with, with rearmament made industrial jobs plentiful and employment rates did soar. However, we need to bear in mind that within that, wages were frozen at 1933 levels, and at the same time, prices rose, and people had to pay the, the winter relief fund, which for an average family was 3% of their income, um, meant that even those in employment, even those with these jobs, didn't have enough to feed their families easily. So there wasn't, there wasn't that comfort, despite the jobs increasing. We saw earlier about how Germans had to form, had to, to go to the, the, the DAF, the German Labour Front, the German, the Nazi version of the unions, um, and they had to pay membership. Um, that was that was that was ob obligatory. Um, so there 29 million members of, the, of that by 1939. Now, there were a number of different Nazi policies focused on making work a pleasant place to be. So strength to joy, Kraft der Freude or KDF meant that there were subsidised holidays, so there would be discounts on trains, on hotels, cheap theatre tickets, gym evenings. Um, each one of these includes an ideological content delivered by the party, so there'd be lectures on cruise ships. But and many people did take up these offers, so in 1937 alone, 1.7 million went on package tours, 7 million took short excursions. The beauty of labour looked to improve workplaces, new toilets, changing rooms, showers, uh, the Reich Labour Service, this is a controversial one, provided cheap labour with state projects on the new motorways. Um, so by 1935, 18 to 25 year olds had, they were obliged to serve six months. So that provided uh, free labour. Um, they provided with, with, with a bit of food and with a uniform. But the free labour, building the new autobahns, the new motorways, um, being controversial because they didn't have any choice about it. One of the positives, the Volkswagen scheme, the, the, the people's car, um, in 1938 meant the workers could pay five mark per week and eventually receive a new car it never happened because the war happened um, and the overall point about this is despite the, the focus on the Nazis that are on work and strength, strength through joy and the positive work experience there's so many initiatives that many of the workers who remember hadn't got much money felt harassed and by 1939 there was clearly a growing a growing disillusionment with the Nazi regime in terms of work now, the women, women formed an important part of Nazi uh, regime and ideology. Uh, they, they were supposed to appear without makeup or perfume. Um, a, a, a woman was, was to have some strength. She was to focus on the three Ks, the Kinder, Kuka, Kirka. So children, kitchen and church. They had to save their leftovers. There would be a one pot Sunday. They were, they were supposed to be physically robust they were, they, so they could their children. They were in, expected to join the Nazi Socialist Women's League, um, which had too many members by 1938, offered meetings and there was a magazine focused on domestic duties. And this really was the Nazi idea. You, you know, the job as a woman is to provide a family, to look after your men and to make sure that they can do their job for the, for, for the nation. They offered loans for women and uh, for men to get married, um, which saw the copper for 1,000 Reichsmark worth of goods if the woman gave up their work for the period of the loan um, and it would take eight years to pay back so 
um, that meant that effectively they, they wouldn't be going back to work for, me, for many women. However, that would be reduced for 25% for every child, meaning if you had four children, you wiped out the need to repay the loan and women did take up this, this offer. So in 1934, 250,000 and a quarter of a million loans were issued. Um, now, because of the demands of making sure with the war economy that in 1937, the need to go out work was cancelled to increase the rate of marriage and births um, even further. Divorce, interestingly, was made easier so that many women who were in uh, a marriage where they, where they were unlikely to have children could divorce more easily and find a new couple, again, with that focus on increasing the birth weight. Now, the major restriction was on higher education. Um, only 10% of all university students were allowed to be women. This really backfired on the Nazis by the 1930s uh, because the, the country needed highly qualified women. They had them before and um, they needed them again to take on the work caused by rearmament. However, women were reluctant to go back to the universities, having been discouraged since 1933, so that really didn't work. The amount of marriages did increase, 560,000 in 1932. Uh, so half a million in 1932, almost three quarters of a million by 1939. There was an increase initially in birth rates, um, but actually it had dropped by 1939 to 3.3 per couple. When compared to 1932, which is 3.6, actually they, they dropped, um, they, they, they'd done worse than what they started with. The amount of women in employment did increase, although that's not surprising in the booming economy. So there were 4.6 million women in, in the agriculture by 1933. Um, by 1939, it was 4.9 million. In industry, the figure rose from 2.7 million to 3.3 million. So there were more people in work, more women in work. Young people, another key part of, of the Nazi regime. So uh, Bernhard Roost, the Reich Education Minister, saying the whole function of education is to create Nazis and that certainly seems the case when you analyse their policy. So Nazis took power in 1933, anyone who wasn't a reliable, politically reliable teacher was forced to resign. 13% um, of head teachers were fired in Berlin. Uh, Jewish teachers were clearly banned from teaching in non-Jewish schools and they had to join the Nazi Socialist Teachers League. 97% of teachers joined it by 1936. Um, political education courses run for teachers, pupils were encouraged to be spies upon their teachers um, and reported any teachers who didn't who, who taught anti-Nazi jokes or non-Nazi material. There were also some Nepala or military academies run by the SS and also Adolf Hitler's schools which were supposedly to, to produce leaders of the future but because they had such a priority on racial and physical criteria, so you could only get into it if you looked a certain way. Um, they were largely a failure. Uh, only 6,000, just over 6,000 people schooled at the 16 Nepal and 10 Adolf schooled by Adolf Hitler schooled by 1939. So it won't be any surprise that the curriculum focused on Nazi ideals, history, the superior superiority of the German and Aryan race, blaming Jews for World War One. Uh, geography, the look into East, Eastern Europe and the need for Lebensraum, firearms in physics, maths, social arithmetic, so examples of how, what the costs of keeping mentally ill patients alive. RE was, was greatly reduced in strength and became optional in 1937. PE made up one sixth or 15 percent of all lessons, focus on being fit, and in biology they focused on um, how Jews were inferior how women could choose their own husbands and why that was a good idea um, and, and the, the idea of untermention, how some human beings were, were, were inferior to others. Youth organisation, so even out of school there was no escaping from this. Um, by They became compulsory after 1936 and by 1939 they had to attend meetings. All other youth groups were shut down uh, so that the young people were forced to join it and had to access, or could access sports and facilities and activities through these youth groups. They focused on indoctrination, physical activities, their political songs, their parades through towns. The boys experienced very militaristic, there were Morse code tests, girls groups focused on domestic duties and military nursing. There were these holiday camps which for the working classes would have been fantastic, a chance to get away from the cities and physical exercise. 1935 membership for 10 to 18 year olds was 48 percent 
by 93 is 82%. So notice there's still 18% of people who aren't going to these groups, even though it was compulsory to attend and to attend meetings as well. Some people hated all parts. Some people loved it, but hated the ideological parts. Um, and interviews with former youth members suggest there was a mixed reaction, but for many, they, they liked the activities, that the organizations were emotional, but they were inconsistent. You never really knew what you were going to get. Finally, on to Nazi racial policy. So Mein Kampf and emphasised the Aryans as the Uber mentioned, the master race, and many of the leading scientists believe that they could they could focus on this, that the Aryans were the most superior group in the Nordic group, blonde hair, blue eyes, and this is an exaggeration, but that's what they focused on. That non-Aryans were inferior, the Untermenschen included black people and Slavs, um, who they called the Dunga folk or Dung people. The lowest group of this were the, were the Jews. Um, and this wasn't down to belief that you couldn't stop being a Jew by not going to a synagogue, but it was actually down to your ancestry. So the Nuremberg Laws of 1935 stated that anyone with three to four grandparents um, who were Jewish was also Jewish. And then if you had one or two Jewish grandparents, you were called Mischling or half Jews. The Nazis believed all sorts of nonsense, like that the Jews and gypsies could be identified by large noses, and they, they measured people's noses to, to aid their research in this. They spread widely misinformation, such as that the Jews are to blame for the loss of World War I, that the anti-Semitism was widespread, actually they were mostly integrated. But Germany was dominated by Jews, when in fact they were 0.5 million of a population of 67 million. And that Jews were were common as well as in fact that's that's a total myth. Um, actually, Jews formed a, a, a wide the full spectrum of political parties, including some initially being being Nazis. We get the persecution of the Jews starting with the boycott of Jewish shops, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, many it became commonplace to see signs with Jews not wanted here by 1935 in public places and restaurants and parks and shops. Uh, increasingly over this time we get physical persecution, um, Nazi newspapers produced cartoons, Jews were portrayed as paedophiles and rapists, um, one the, the gift pills of the toadstool portrayed Jews as a poisonous mushroom killing a whole village, a whole city or even an entire nation. In 1935, this was written into law with the Nuremberg Laws. Marriages and extramarital sexual relations between Germans and Jews were punishable by imprisonment. Jews were citizens, but they were only subjects and therefore didn't have the rights of German citizens either. After Kristallnacht, it became clear that the, the Jews were, were going to be physically persecuted as well. Um, so after a, an assassination of a German embassy official in Paris by a Jew, Goebbels took this opportunity to tell Nazi parties, youth groups, the SA, the SS, to uh, demonstrate against the Jews. We get 267 synagogues destroyed, 7,500 Jewish owned established and the windows smashed. At least a minimum of 91 Jews were murdered, according to our records, but there was a high number of associated suicides, so-called suicides and rapes at this time as well. We also get the first rounding up of Jewish men. 30,000 were sent to concentration camps, which is the first time that this had been done en masse and we get very few people going against this. Now, we get over this time period a slowly wearing away of, of the Jews um, with a number of laws. So looking at social exclusions to start off with, we get very early on Jews and, and uh, the Aryans not allowed to play together. They had to add Israel and Sarah to their first names. They, their passports were stamped with, with a J. They couldn't buy newspapers or go to theatres by 1938. They're banned from swimming pools. They could be evicted from their home by 1939. And then the, a curfew is brought in in September of 1939 as well. So they, they couldn't leave their homes after a certain time. They're, they're treated as the enemy and their rights are slowly eroded. Equally, they, they aren't allowed to, to uh, go be part of education. Race studies becomes part of the school examination system. Um, they weren't allowed to gain doctorates. They couldn't go to Jewish schools from 1938. They're banned from universities in the same year. Jews were excluded from the most important jobs and the jobs with influences. So judges in 1933, vets, um, journalists in 1936, Jewish doctors not allowed to practice on errands in 1938. And by 1939, they couldn't be dentists or chemists or nurses or any other medical posts. They hit them financially as well. 
Um, they had to tell how much wealth they were using to help Germany by 1938. They couldn't run businesses by 1938 as well. Had to hand over their jewels and their silver and the pearls in 1939. And if they did want to emigrate after Kustelnacht, they couldn't take any valuables with them. Um, 282,000 Jews did emigrate from Germany in 1933 to 1939, but they had to pay a very heavy emigration tax. So people often ask, why didn't they just flee? Well, many of them thought, well, it can't get any worse. Um, and and they, they knew they were losing so much by doing so. So many chose to stay there and hope it would get better. And of course, sadly, it never did. Many of them really sadly, like Anne Frank, fled to neighbouring countries like the Netherlands, only to be caught later by advancing German armies and uh, be subject to the same persecution they were fleeing from in the first place.